Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and this is the third video on sequences where we're going to be looking at series. It is mainly uh, based around A-level maths but is applicable to lots of other maths modules also. Okay, so what is a series? Well, we should be familiar with the term arithmetic sequence from previous videos. It is sometimes known as an arithmetic progression or can even be called an AP for arithmetic progression. Well, an arithmetic progression becomes an arithmetic series when we take each term, so the first term, second term, third term, and all the way up to the last term, u of n, and if we start to add them all together, it becomes a, a series. Now also, u of 1 is often denoted a, so u of 1 is often denoted a, and uh, the next term, u of um, 2 will be a plus some common difference d, u of 3 would equal a plus 2 times the common difference d, and you'd go all the way up to u of n, which we should have come across before, a plus n minus 1 lots of d. And we could add these all together. Okay, let's just have a quick look at an example here and just see how we might be able to apply this. So it tells us that the third term, third term of an arithmetic sequence is 20, and the seventh term is 12. We're asked to find the first term, and then we're asked to find the 20th term. Let's use the formula a plus n minus 1 times d to try and help us solve this problem. So I'm going to write down two equations. I'm going to write down the blue equation, call it equation one. And that's going to be where uh, the third term is a plus n minus one. Well, n for the third term is three. So three minus one times d. When we work that out, it tells us that it's 20. So that's going to be equal to 20. Now I'm going to tidy this up. That means a plus three take away one is two. So a plus 2d equals 20. Let's do a similar thing for the other piece of information. The seventh term is 12. So a plus 7 take away 1 times d will equal 12. Which implies, if we tidy up, 7 take away 1 is 6. So a plus 6d equals 12. Okay. I would really like to know what A is and D. So we've got two equations, equation one and two, and we've got two unknowns. So we're going to have to use a simultaneous equation. So A plus 2D equals 20. In fact, I should have done that one in blue or whatever. Let's copy it down. Okay, okay. So there's our second equation. What we're going to do is we're going to do equation one, take away equation two. Or in this case, actually, it's equation equation two, take away equation one. So equation two, take away equation one. A take away A is zero. Six D take away two D is four D. And 12 take away 20 is negative 8. 4d is negative 8. That means that the common difference d is going to be negative 2. Okay, now we know what d is. Let's substitute it back in. Sub d equal to negative 2 into either of these. I'm going to substitute it into 1. Hence we get a plus 2 times negative 2 must be equal to 20, which implies that a subtract 4 must equal 20, which tells us that the first term, a, must be equal to 24. And I think that was what we were required to do for part a. So a is 24. The first term is 24. Okay, part b, find the 20th term. So let's find the 20th term. 
That means n will be equal to 20. And let's use the formula a plus n minus 1 times d. So a we've already worked out. That's 24. Plus n minus 1. n is 20. So 19 times d. And d we've worked out as well. d is negative 2. So 24 and 19 times negative 2 is negative 38 and when we take 38 away from 24 we get negative 14. So the last or the 20th term is negative 14. That's one application of the formula. Now I'm just going to introduce you to this guy here. His name is um, Carl Friedrich Gauss and there's a famous story surrounding this guy it's that he was in school and he was he was asked by his teacher because he, he was um, he was misbehaving and he was he was told by his teacher that he had to add up all the numbers from 1 to 100 and the teacher was absolutely flabbergasted to discover that Gauss had managed to complete this task in a matter of minutes very very quickly indeed and the teacher was stunned and here's how the story goes that he uh, reputedly figured this out suppose we have the 100 square 1 to 100 and he was asked to add them all up so he wants to sum up all the numbers from 1 to 100 well he's basically asked to sum to add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on and so forth all the way up to 100. And apparently what Gauss did was when he said, well, what happens if I take this series of numbers and I reverse it? And I say, well, I, that's the same as doing the sum of 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus 97 and so on and so forth up as far as 1. Now watch what happens if we add the two lines together. We're going to add the top line to the bottom line, or line 1 with line 2. Well, s plus s gives us 2s. And then 1 plus 100 is 101. 2 plus 99 is 101. 3 plus 98 is 101 and you can see now that every single time we're going to add these two numbers we're going to get 101 and then if we notice how many 100 and ones will appear so there's going to be a hundred terms here and we've added that to another hundred terms so we're, we're going to end up with a hundred 100 lots of 101. Now we didn't want the sum, uh, we would, didn't want double the sum, we wanted just the sum. So that's equal to 100 times 101 divided by 2. And if you were to work that out, you'd get 5050. Zero, five, zero. And that is the sum of the first 100 numbers in 100 square. Now let's see if we can generalize this idea. Suppose we were asked to add up a sum of numbers as follows. So A being the first term. The next term would be A plus D. The next term would be A plus 2d and that would go on and on up as far as the last term which is a plus n minus 1 times d and let's do what Gauss did where he wrote the the series in reverse so this term here the last term is a plus n minus 1 times d. 
the term before that is going to be a plus n minus 2 times d. The term before that is going to be a plus n minus 3 times d, and so on and so forth, until you get to the very last term, which in this case was a. Let's see what happens now if we add these two together. So, s plus s is going to give us 2s. We're going to write it as an s sub n, so the sum of the numbers, the sum of n numbers. We're going to have double the sum of our numbers. Well, let's pair them up. a plus a plus n minus 1 times d is going to give me 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And then here I'm going to have 2a again plus, now if I have n minus 2 times d and I add d to that, that's going to give me n minus 1 lots of d. And then we add these together. Again I'm going to get 2a plus, I've got n minus 3 lots of d and I'm going to add 2d to that, which again is going to be n minus 1 lots of d. And we're going to keep on going. And again, the last part is going to be a plus a, which is going to be 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d. Now what we're going to do is ask ourselves the question, how many lots of this, let me take a bit of green pen, how many times are we going to be adding these together? If you think about what happened when we added the numbers from 1 to 100, there was 100 of them. Well, we're going to do this and keep adding, and it's going to happen n times. So I can actually rewrite this, this whole thing here, as n times, and I'll put brackets, n times 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d. So we're going to add these up, and there's going to be n lots of them. So I know that 2 times s of n is this, which means that the sum of the numbers is going to be equal to n over 2 lots of 2a plus n minus 1 lots of d. And this, ladies and gents, is the formula to work out the sum of n terms of a sequence, or the, the sum of the series. Now it is important that we, we know how to prove this, so it, uh, it's very important that we get this down. Um, and it, it can also be shown, it can also be shown that the sum of the numbers, the sum of the series, can be equal to n over 2 times a plus l, where l is the last term. So if you know the first term and the last term, we can, and the, number, the amount of terms in the sequence, we can actually work out the sum as well. I'm not going to prove this one just yet. We'll do that in a later video. But it is important that you do know both this formula and this formula, and you need to be able to prove both. We're going to do the second one in another video. Okay, let's have a look at this example here. So I need to find the sum of the first 30 terms of the following arithmetic series. So 8, 12, 16, 20... Let's write the formula down again. So the sum of the numbers in a sequence is equal to n over 2 lots of 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Let's see if we can write down what each uh, term is. Well, a is going to equal 8 because it's given. N is going to equal 
30 because we're, we're asked for the first 30 terms. And D, the common difference, we can see clearly here that it's going up in fours. Now all we have to do is apply the formula. So the sum of the first 30 terms of the sequence will be 30 over 2 times 2 times 8 plus n, which is 30 take away 1, so 29 times 4, which equals 30 over 2 is 15, times 2 times 8 is 16, plus 29 times 4, well that's like 30 times 4 take away 4, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 120 take away 4, 1, 1, 6, So we need to do um, 15 times 16 plus 116 is going to give me 132. So I need to do 15 times 132. Um, let's see, I'm going to do 132 times by, uh, times by 5. Remember, we can't use a calculator here. Which is 660 and then do 660 times by 3 which gives me 0 18 carry 1 18 and 1 is 19 1980 is what I make that out and that's the the sum of the first 30 terms of that series okay that's it for this video hopefully you found it useful I'll be back again with another video soon all the best and good luck with the revision